passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver, Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Dr. Kevin Show, where we challenge everything and everyone. Uh, we're having a repeat guest uh, th- on tonight. The first time this guest was on, uh, we were having horrible thunderstorms at our actually home station, uh, where all of this comes out of. And one moment I could hear him, one moment I could hear my producer, one moment I couldn't hear any of them, and it went round and round until we finally just had to call the show. Uh, So I'm excited to have him back now and to be able to get him back on air, and uh, we're just going to put the energy out that we know thunderstorms tonight. Um, Before we get there, uh, as always, uh, there's a few things that I like to make sure people understand. First of all, we are now a live call-in show. Last week we had several call-ins, and it was a mix for a great show when you call in and give your perspective and share your opinion and ask your questions. If you want to call in to myself or the guest tonight, you may do so by calling 202-570-7057. Again, that's 202-570-7057. That is all posted on facebook.com backslash mydrkevin, M-Y-D-R-K-E-V-I-N, as well as the write-up about tonight's guest. And you can post things there, and we'll also see it, and we'll read your questions or your thoughts or comments on air. So either call in or come to the Facebook page. This is your opportunity to talk to people that you don't normally get a chance to talk to. This is your opportunity to get people who don't normally have a chance to hear maybe what you have to say or your perspective of the world to hear you. So, you know, it's it's a good opportunity. So give us a call or post us a comment uh, and come join the show. Uh, so also... Um, I want to talk about the fact that because we are now a live call-in show, sometimes we get a little off track in that nice little structure that I have. Perfectly okay with me. If we don't get through a whole segment um, with all of the touch points that we wanted, it's more important that we actually... Uh, ...what this show was all about. Now, as we start every show, we're going to talk about a hot topic. Sometimes a hot topic is something that bothered or makes me feel warm and fuzzy. For some reason, the approaching of Halloween, uh, it, it kind of it made me feel warm and fuzzy. I had some Halloween's growing up. I was pre blades and apples and worry and, you know, the whole town was our neighbor. And you could and you could get out. One's lobster house and to the restaurant in your car and an ice cream. And no matter what it was, it was never too cold to have an ice cream. So some very, very good I, I'm sitting in the internet and Wi Fi cellular. No idea. I'm just sitting here. Um, so I, I don't know what to say. You, you were you were fine when you first came on, Kevin, and then after the uh, the intro music, that's when you started uh, cutting in and out. I, I haven't moved an inch. I, I'm sitting right here. I made sure I was hooked into Wi-Fi. I'm on the phone. I'm on Lucy. I don't don't know what to say. Okay, it's good now. Okay, well, we're just going to continue. Um, so, but for those in the listening audience, welcome to the technology of internet radio. So, one of the things that we are uh, we do associate Halloween with is the costumes and the candy. And now looking back and seeing all of the issues that we have today, I wonder, is it so wise to wrap so much energy up into candy and kids? 
We look at the, the health issues, the things that are going on, the things that we're having problems with, with childhood obesity, childhood diabetes, uh, things that we never had before. And I have to ask, is it time that we reinvented Halloween? Does Halloween have to include really bad for you candy? Are there other options? Is it time to start some nutritions? We know things we didn't know when I did Halloween. We, you know, and we see that my generation suffered in many ways from the Halloweens we had because it wasn't just Halloween. And then following Jeff and Def generations definitely did. So that's our hard topic for the night. I'm going to introduce tonight's guest. We're going to bring him on. Uh, and hopefully we're all set. Um, technology, for some reason, just doesn't love me. I don't know why. Uh, tonight's guest is Joseph Holmes. Joseph is a Vietnam veteran where his life was saved but what he likes to call his very first angel intervention. He's also a graduate of SDSU, a grandmaster retired of the Kenshin Kan Karate, Life Success Martial Arts, an Amazon international bestseller, poet of 10 best-selling books and counting as well as a speaker and seminar leader. Several years ago, after going through the loss of his company, bankruptcy, and a nervous breakdown, Joseph had several notable angel interventions. The first was when he was encased in a bubble of white light for one week, followed by several years of l later by a healing of by Mother Mary, in turn followed by a subsequent healing of his childhood molestation by Mary Magdalene. So I'd like to welcome Joseph on. You can find out more uh, about Joseph, you can email him at joseph at loveyourselfwealthy.com. He is also on Facebook, uh, facebook.com backslash joseph.homes.928. He's on Instagram, uh, and he twitters at love notes Maggie. That's love notes Maggie. Again, all of this is on facebook.com backslash my Dr. Kevin. All of these links, all of this information, and more. Joseph, are you there? I am. Hello. Hello, Joseph. You're going to put your nice energies out. I'm going to put... <laughs> nice to meet you. We're going to put your energies out. I'm going to put my energies out, and we're going to direct them at that internet between you, me, and Ohm Times Radio, and we're going to make this interview work. How does that sound? Great. Sounds great. So the hot topic, is it time to reinvent Halloween? What do you think? Well, I kind of, uh, when I have my children, I kind of reinvented it myself. So, you know, I kept their, their candy at a minimum. Uh, but, you know, I let them uh, enjoy uh, the fun of trick-or-treating and, and, and getting, uh, getting the handouts. But, you know, then we would uh, go through the candy and, you know, uh, cut down on, on the amount that they actually received and, you know, so they had a good time, and, and it wasn't uh, too unhealthy for them. What did you do with the leftover candy? Well, you know, I don't remember now. We probably lost it. We didn't want to give it to anybody, so, <laughs> so uh, I imagine we just tossed it out. So you imagine you just threw it away? Is that what you said? I believe so, yeah. I don't really remember. Yeah. Well, you know, as a culture, is it time for us to wake up and say, you know, isn't there something else we could do? I mean, as an individual parent, I salute the fact that you looked at it and said, yeah, this is not healthy. Um, and I think that's great. But as a culture, is it time for us to look at it and say, why are we buying into these things when we clearly know that they're not okay, when we know that they're not right? And is there some way where we can have them, we can hold on to the good part of the traditions and create some new ones. Because, you know, just kind of like saying, okay, yeah, you can't eat all that candy and take it away from you, you know, and kind of sort through it, isn't really changing the tradition. What do you think would be a better way for the kids to still have fun and maybe do something that's healthier or well, better I think for it them? Has to, I think it has to come from the role models in society. Uh, and, you know, role models can be, you know, uh, 
a teacher at school or, uh, you know, the principal or uh, or senator or Congress people. Um, but it has to come from, I think, uh, uh, the influencers and, and then trickle down. But everybody's got free choice. I mean, you know, we can't regulate it. We can't legislate it, uh, you know, but we can have people uh, setting the example. And it starts at home, I believe. You know, the parents have to set the example. And, you know, but you certainly, I don't think you can legislate it. No, no. And, and the last thing we need is more legislation. Um, right. You know, I'm just, I'm looking for some options out there of, you know, if, you know, if you're, you have grandchildren now, I'm assuming, yes? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, if, if something, if you're, if you're, children you know, and, and you know started and say look you know because of all things that have happened to make Halloween bad you know a, a, a dicey at the very least is say let's do more you know community gatherings or parties or do stuff and you know and let's introduce the concept that we'll somehow fund really healthy snacks that taste good um, instead of buying into the really addictive high sugar snacks, you know, I mean, a movement has to start somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, but but again, I think it has to come from the influencers. Um, you know, it, um, you know, kids look at role models, uh, Muhammad Ali, for example, or or uh, you know uh, somebody else. But uh, you know, it has to. I think it has to come from them, and and. Uh, but again, you know, uh, when we raised our two kids, uh, th th they were raised on very healthy diets. So, you know, when Halloween came around, it wasn't that big a deal that they got uh, some sweets because they certainly didn't get a lot of sweets, you know, uh, during the rest of the year. So that was one uh, one day uh, out of 365 that they, they were actually allowed to I get sweets. And then, you know, they might have a whole bag of sweets and we maybe took two thirds of that away. Yep. So there's our music. We'll be right back in a minute. Uh, and we'll start putting Joseph through the Dr. Kevin paces. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, inspired the inspired and the inspiration. inspiration. There is no death, only a change of worlds. Chief Seattle. Deborah Livingston is an award-winning intuitive psychic medium whose international services include mediumship, spiritual assessment, animal communication, and spiritual mentoring. She is a published author and a trained shaman. Deborah provides evidential messages from spirit and departed loved ones. Learn more at devlivemedium.com. That's D-E-B-L-I-V medium.com. Mother, Mother Ocean. Hi, I'm Jimmy Buffett. West Indian manatees are one of the most unique animals on Earth, and we're still finding out so many new things about them. 
The manatees are endangered, and many of them are killed or injured each year because of watercraft collisions or other human activities. You can help save these gentle marine mammals. For free tips on what you can do, call Save the Manatee Club at 1-800-432-JOIN. Thank you. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show, where we challenge everything and everyone. We have on tonight, we have Joseph Holmes. And, you know, in the winter of 2013, uh, Mary Magdalene, whom Joseph affectionately refers to as Maggie, began conveying four stanza poems to him. These are called Love Notes for Your Soul and touch on everyday challenges of living as well as universal principles of success. Beginning in 2016, Joseph has begun a column entitled Ask Maggie, in which readers mail in questions to Joseph. He then publishes Maggie's answers to the questions in his own commentary to help readers understand what Maggie is conveying. Questions' names are always kept confidential. If you have questions on any subjects, nothing is off limit. Please contact Joseph at joseph at loveyourselfwealthy.com and you can find out more about uh, joseph at loveyourselfwealthy.com so joseph welcome back yeah, are hi, you there kevin. Uh, kevin yeah that's yes can you hear me yep so yeah, um uh, yeah you know, that, this is that, that, that website is love notes for your soul.com Okay. Uh, the reason the information yeah. get that I posted was loveyourselfwealthy.com. Okay. So it's love. Okay. Love notes for your soul. So, com is a website. Yeah. Okay. So uh, love notes for your soul. What I'll have you do um, is on Facebook where we posted that in the center on that website, so people can see it. Uh, but we have all of your uh, we have all of your your, uh, click links and everything here so people will find okay great. and do remember this is a one show so you can call in at 202 yeah, you're, so you're, a, you're cutting out a segment you're cutting out hmm? yeah you're cutting out again try to see if I can catch a lightning, a lightning bolt so we're just going to have to go with it. Uh, um, you know, talk, put in a good word. Uh, that she helps the connection strong. Um, so, just this is our first uh, segment where we ask your, uh, you to take our listeners outside the box. Where do you want to stretch their comfort zones? Maybe introduce them to a different idea or a concept, something you've experienced that our listeners can grow from. Well, I think uh, uh, I think uh, listening. Well, it comes down to the fear and doubt and 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 love. And I believe uh, every day we we only have two choices: uh, fear or love. And I like to uh, challenge your listeners to um, uh, start be becoming aware of uh, when they make a decision every day. Uh, even the smallest decision, are they making that decision from fear or are they making it from love? And I think most people are going to find out that most of the decisions they make every day stem from uh, uh, from fear. And so, um, and, and people ask me, well, how, how, how do I know uh, if it's based on love? And that's where you where you listen to what I call your angels. Some people call that your intuition, your gut feeling, but I call it your angels actually communicating with you. And if you listen to your gut, if you listen to your angels, and then have the faith to take action on what you're hearing, then, then you're coming from an aspect of love rather than fear. Do you think that fear is able to in a voice that one might think is angelic? 
Oh, oh yeah, uh, but but the way you, the way you uh, determine uh, if it's angelic or it's just fear, your ego. Uh, when you have a true intuitive feeling, um, you have a feeling of peace that goes with that. And uh, if it's coming from your ego, then there's a feeling of unease about it. Um, but we're so accustomed to it. We're so accustomed to that feeling of unease that uh, it look, to a lot of people now, it's not a feeling of unease anymore because they're so accustomed to it. So, you know, it's so the the fear voice has become so regular that it just sounds normal. It sounds normal, right? All right. It, it, it sounds normal. Um, but I like that. I mean, I like that. You know, what I'm hearing you say to my listeners is when, when you're when you're getting quiet and you're listening to that voice, tune in to where that voice vibrates within you. Where do right. you feel it? Well, you uh, know, Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart has a great song called The Rhythm of Your Heart. And I listen to that every day, at least once. And uh, when you wake up in the morning, you know, most of us, when we wake up in the morning, we go straight to the head, straight to the ego. And the ego, E-G-O, is an acronym for edging God out, you know. And I call it your monkey mind. And your monkey mind wants to stay in control. And and what, when people get into this work, a lot of times they begin fighting with the monkey mind. And you can't fight with it. If you fight with the ego, you're always going to lose. So what you do is you just befriend the ego. So, for example, um, and it happens to me, you know, when, when I wake up in the morning, uh, I'm, I might be in my head, but I catch myself. And instead of fighting with the ego, I just... I just give it thanks. I said, thank you for reminding me to drop into my heart. And so I drop into my heart. Now, that might be right away. When I wake up, I might be in my heart. Some days I might be in my head while I'm laying there in bed. I get, I get into my heart. Sometimes, you know, I uh, eat breakfast and then realize, hey, you know, I've been in my head all morning. Drop into my heart. So... Uh, the, the thing is, don't beat yourself up. Uh, you know, just use your ego as a friend to remind you, you know, to drop into your heart. And then when it reminds you to do that, go there. And if you drop into your heart and base your decisions from your heart rather than your head, uh, then that's the way you, you make progress. So, you know, I always ask, ask what I call the listeners, my listeners questions, the ones that, you know, I, I can, I imagine that they may be having. So can you tell them, I mean, drop into your heart sounds good. And I, I, and I completely get the concept, but does the average person who's listening here know how to do that what do you how, well, uh, how does the person do that well you just you just you do it by starting right? and you know that's how i did it you just do it by starting and uh and uh you, if you have to write yourself a note you know and keep it with you and because when you first start out doing this you know you may go through half the day and then, you know, you're looking for a change in your pocket. You pull out your nose, say, drop into your heart. Oh, okay, thank you. And then drop into your heart. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So you just have to start. You know, people ask me, well, how do I, I don't know what my purpose is. How do I find my purpose? Well, you find your purpose by starting what I call your road to Rome. You know, Rome being whatever your, your purpose or mission is. And you just start on your road to Rome. Uh, you have to start. You know, Henry David Thoreau said back in 1842, you know, walk confidently in the direction of your dreams. In other words, just start walking, you know, endeavoring to live the life that you have imagined. Now, Thoreau didn't say live the life you imagine. He said endeavor, try to, 
do your best to live the life that you have imagined, and you'll meet with a success unexpected in common hours. Well, um, that's all you can do. You know, we're all at different uh, starting points. Just get on your road and start walking. And when you okay. do that, when you start taking, when you start taking that inspired action, you know, that action that comes from your heart becomes easier and easier every day. But again, you know, in the beginning, you're going to want to, you know, go to fear. You know, you want to, because that's what you're accustomed to. And that's okay. It's okay. You just keep doing it until eventually you're making more decisions based from love than you are from fear. But that's, you know, that's a different time frame for everybody. Question, Joseph, because you're still not answering it. Okay. I, I want to. I, the question is, I, I'm going to be a spiritual five-year-old. What do you mean? Drop into my heart. What does that mean? What does that look like? How do I know? Show me the way, because I, I, I'm not understanding. And and that's what I I can envision some of my listeners out there are saying. What, you know, is it? Do you do? Visualization? Is it a medit? What do you no, mean by it, dropping in your it, heart? It, it's different for everybody. You have to do what works for you. So, in other words, if you're trying, if you if you open a business and want to be successful, you know, and you find a mentor and you see everything that that mentor did, and then you copy it, even though some of those things that the mentor did, you don't feel really good about doing, but you do them because hey, that made that person successful. So, what's well, going to backfire on you because it's not you. So you just got to find out what works for you. What works for me, Kevin, is that uh, I listen to Rod Stewart's song, the, ry- the Rhythm of Your Heart. I listen to it in the morning, every morning. That's one of the things I do. And that, that song makes me aware not to listen to my ego and rather listen to my heart or my instincts or my gut or my angels, whatever you want to call it. But people know what that intuitive feeling is. We, everybody has had, has been with somebody sometime in their life uh, where they just didn't feel good about that person. You know, that's their gut talking to them. Everybody knows what that feeling is, you know. And so, in the beginning, it might just take some practice, but you got to find out what works for you. So there's our music. Uh, We'll be right back with Joseph Holm, and we're going to be talking more about uh, dropping in your heart and what are those pathways. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Searching for a perspective beyond the mainstream? Check it out. Join your hosts, Yelito Pascual and Diana Gold Holland, on Share International Radio for thought provoking views behind the news. Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us at shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. This is why you work so hard to pay the mortgage. Because home is more than four walls and a roof. It's that porch swing and a summer evening. It's everybody over for Sunday dinner and your family sleeping in their own beds at night. Making home affordable is a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Good night, Mama. This is why. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council. Hello, 
Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show. Uh, remember, we are a call-in show, and you can call in at 202-570-7057, or you can come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin, where you will find a whole litany of ways to get in touch with tonight's guest and myself as well. You will also find places you can comment. I've just posted um, asking our tonight's listeners uh, and people that come to my timeline to share how they drop into their heart. How do you drop into your heart? Joseph shared with us in our first uh, in our last segment that, you know, he has this, uh, a song that he listens to. And uh, I'm going to ask Joseph to go onto the timeline and post the song and the person. Um, and that's a way that when he feels like he's stuck in his head, he gets back into his heart. Uh, I know that when I look to get back into my heart, if I've been too much in my head, I will stop. I will take some deep breaths. I will get into a quiet place. And I just think, I feel myself sinking into that place of knowing. That place when you're in your heart is that place that you may have that same feeling that you have when you get an intuitive message. You get an overwhelming feeling of calm and peace. The chatter has gone away. Many people use many different ways to get there. And um, we're asking our listeners to call in and share theirs tonight or post it on the timeline. Uh, as you know, I've shared a little of what I do, and uh, I do a few different things, and Joseph has shared a few things that he has done uh, to do that, dropping into his heart, so he's living from that place. Joseph is a Vietnam veteran where, he, you know, his life was saved, but what he likes to call by his very first angel intervention. Uh, and Joseph now uh, does uh, um, notes, does a column called Ask Maggie. Um, and one of the things I was thinking, Joseph, is some of our listeners could actually email you at joseph at loveyourselfwealthy.com. Uh, and they could email you there to ask Maggie for maybe some insights of how they could best they sure. want to try to drop into their heart. I think that would be a wonderful exercise. What do you think? Yeah, it's just, yeah, just, yeah, perfect. Just drop me a line and I'll be happy to ask her. Yeah, uh, I'd like to you know briefly tell you a little story because it it, it uh, addresses what we're talking about here. But uh, after Maggie uh, uh, Mary Magdalene healed me in my childhood molestations, uh, we maintain a, a, a relationship. And at one point, she said. Uh, she, she asked me if she could call me uh, Joseph, which is my middle name. And uh, I said, uh, sure. And I said, but can I call you Maggie? And I said, I know Maggie's not a nickname for for Mag Magdalene, but I just love the, the name Maggie. And she said, yeah, you can call me Maggie. Well, remember, right? and then in March of the following year, I beginning my, I, uh, I was in my head. My ego was taking over, and it uh, started making me doubt that these love notes were actually coming from Mary Magdalene. Uh, so I asked, I, I, I asked her, I said, I'd like to have a burning bush. I, I want you to show me a sign that these are really coming from you and not something, you know, people, people take a, a photograph of a UFO, right, and it's always hazy and you can't say I said no I want something I want a burning bush that's irrefutable well you know a day went by and nothing happened a week went by and nothing happened a month went by nothing happened so I kind of forgot about it but I kept coming she wakes me up at 2 a.m. every morning I come into my writing desk and they just flow uh, onto the onto the writing pad and that year she said, I want you to start publishing these. So I thought, I said, God, okay, I better, I better let some people read some of these and, and get some testimonials on them. So I was, I was on this website that has hundreds, if not thousands of people who provide different services. And, you know, I'm a visual person, so I was just going through the pictures of the people. And I don't know how many I went through a lot, but I... I, my eye caught this lady. Her name was Angelina. That's no last name, just Angelina. And so I clicked on it, 
and um, I sent her uh, I sent her a message, and I told her uh, I have some of these. I didn't tell her the background. I just told her I have some poems I'd like you to read, and I'll pay you to read them uh, for your time. But if you if you like them, I'd appreciate a testimonial. If you don't like them, that's fine. And um, so she wrote back and she said, well, you know, I really don't do that. <laughs> okay, so, so we went back and forth a few days and finally she said, okay, send me some. So I sent some, a sampling of the love notes to her with the history with me and, and Maggie. And the next day she writes back and she says, Joseph, love notes, but I have to tell you something. Everybody knows me as Angelina. My father named me. But my middle name is Magdalena. And when I was, uh, when I was small, all my good, close friends, nobody else, all my close friends called me Maggie. Now, uh, you know, I told Mary Magdalene that, you know, Maggie's not a, a common nickname for me. So I, a I asked her, I said, now, wait a minute. Why, why would they call you Maggie? That's not a common nickname for Magdalena. She said, no, it's not, but somebody called it and I liked it, so all my close friends kept calling me Maggie. Well, w about a month later, I guess, after she got uh, more comfortable with me, she emailed me again and she said, okay, I've got to tell you something else. She said, my father named me Angelina, and that's what everybody calls me today. But my mother wanted to call me, wanted to name me Mary. So my name on my birth certificate is Mary Magdalene Bador. And she said, and I know you're not going to believe me. So she sent me a copy of her passport. That's the burning bush. I had forgotten all about it. But of all the thousands of people I could have I chosen, I chose her. All I knew was her name was Angelina. And it turns out her name's Mary Magdalene. Her her friends called her Maggie, which is not a common nickname for Mary Magdalene. So that put me back into my heart. You see, I was I was I was go, my ego was you know that's the thing. The ego will always want to have control, so it would just kind of sneak itself back in, you know, and and so that that was a, uh, and so I just. And, and people can do that, you know. I, I you know, my, my angel is Mary Magdalene, but you know, you can ask your if you, even if you don't know who your angel is, you can ask. You say, look, give me something to help me, you know, tune into my heart, you know. And it might be a song, it might be a something in a book, it might. It could be anything, you know, a book falling off the shelf when you're in the bookstore. It could be anything. But the important thing is just to ask, you know. And uh, so, so just, well, just for you, I want you I, mm -hmm. I was going to say, you know, one of the things that I want to share with the listeners before we hit music in our next break is that oftentimes... People will get signs like that about who to have as a spiritual mentor or a spiritual reader or somebody to teach or, they, or to be a student of. Or I always remember because I channeled a, I channel an entity named Wei Chi and he wrote a book through me. And, and when I was on the road traveling once, this woman. You know, she told me that she started having this dream and she kept on hearing the name Wei Chi and then she had no idea what it was and there's been several different definitions of it. And then one day she was in a bookstore and literally my book, The Lost Steps of Reiki, the channel messages of Wei Chi fell off the top shelf and hit her in the head while she was standing there. And when she said, well, I guess I'm supposed to buy it and she went up to the front counter, there was a poster advertising that I was coming to town in two weeks to teach Wei Chi. Wow, there you go, you see. And so, you know, I, th these are very powerful stories, and the ego wants to try to convince us, oh, that's just a coincidence, you're just making it that's up. Right. But when that's you pay right. attention, like you did, like this woman did, and, and I have my own stories of when I paid attention and didn't, 
right. Right. Um, right. You know, uh, what beautiful pathways will open up for us. Yes. Now, do, do you ever feel well, like you can at any time get quiet and, and feel her presence with you? Um, yeah, I, I feel she's with me all the time. Um, in the beginning, uh, she would wake me at 2 a.m. and I would write uh, in the early morning. And that's the only time I seemed to be able to, to really uh, connect with her. But now, uh, after a few years, uh, you know, I'll sit down. I can sit down at any time and write out the love notes. Uh, and, and I could be in a busy place. It doesn't matter. Uh, but in the beginning, uh, I had it had to be early in the morning when everything was quiet. Um, but you know, as I've become accustomed to it, uh, but I still get doubts. You know, uh, I had I had a, uh, a little bit of a doubt um, a few months ago, and she, as soon as that doubt came in, she said, "Look up Migdalia." Now, back in 1969, I was in college just before I went into the service, and I had befriended this lady uh, from uh, Mexico. Her name was Migdalia. I never forgot it because it's a very uncommon name. Uh, but we just hit it off, and we were like two peas in a pod. But then I, uh, you know, they were drafting everybody, so I enlisted and never saw her again, never heard from her again. But I've always remembered her. And uh, a few months ago, Maggie said, look up Migdalia. So I looked it up, and it said uh, it means flower. And I thought, well, yeah, she was like a flower. That's interesting. So the next day, she says, look it up again. I said, well, I looked it up. She said, look it up again. Use a different source. So I, I used a different source, and it said Magdalia, a derivative of Magdalena. <laughs> so <laughs> what, Maggie, what Maggie was telling me was that she's been with me all my life, but I was so hard-headed <laughs> back in my early days that I, I didn't have a clue. You know, but the main thing no, we're, we're I've gonna, done, Kevin, is I've always stayed open-minded. So we're going to be back in a moment, and we're going to see if Joseph can either get a love note or share a love note that he's drawn to with our audience in our next segment. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Arrow's Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. The majority of victims know their attacker. It could be your friend, your neighbor, or someone you met at a party. If you said no, it's rape, and it's a crime. This is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline today at 1-800-656-HOPE or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. Hello, 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 and welcome back to our last segment of the Dr. Kevin Show this week. We have on tonight Joseph Holmes. Joseph, uh, in the winter of 2013, uh, started uh, creating four stands of poems uh, connected with Mary Magdalene, who he began referring to as Maggie. These are called Love Notes for Your Soul and touch on everyday challenges of living as well as universal principles of success. In 2016, he began a column entitled Ask Maggie, which readers mail in questions to Joseph. You can mail your question in to Joseph. Uh, he keeps everything confidential at joseph at loveyourselfwealthy.com. 
uh, and he'll connect with Maggie and get an answer for you and share it. Uh, I was going to try to ask you, and we the music came up too quick to to see him when we were on break. If you would see if Maggie had a, had a message for me or for the audience or somebody out there that something they needed to hear, but I don't know if you heard me over the music or not. Did you hear me? Uh, no, but uh, uh, I thought I thought we were going to take a question from a. But I can do that. Uh, uh, let's see what I come up with. Uh, let's keep talking, and, and if something comes through, I'll jot it down, and then I can uh, pass it on to you. Okay. Um, because, uh, you know, we're, we we don't have anybody called it that has called in yet that I know of, um, and we have no comments. We have no questions on the timeline, but if we get one, we will certainly share it and ask you that question. Um you know, we kind of went through the last uh, segment without really uh, doing the normal thing, which is fine. I'm very flexible. In this last segment, I like to ask my guest, you know, what do they want? I, I call it what a load of crap. And basically it's what do you think that's a load of crap that's going on in the world today that's sucking people in? Something that's keeping people from getting into their heart. It's keeping in there you go. And you'd like to, you know, like, sh illuminate it. What, what would that be, Joseph? Well, it's fear. Uh, we're just, we're just uh, tuned into fear. Um, and, you know, that's, that's why uh, Mother Teresa uh, could do what she could do, you know, because um, she didn't tune in. Well, they asked her one time. They said, uh uh, they asked her about uh, attending an anti-war rally, and she said, no. She said, I won't attend an anti-war rally. Now, I'll have a peace rally, and I'll attend it. Well, you know, uh, you could say that those are the same things, right? An anti-war rally and a peace rally. But she was emphasized the importance of the wording and the importance of the concept. And we're just, you know, anti-war, uh, the war on drugs, the war on this, the war on that, the war on terrorism. It's all based on fear, you know. And that's why she could walk into a war zone so, and they would, uh, they would stop fighting because she was, she was grounded in love, not fear. So let's give our, let's give our, I mean, I love that. Let's give our listeners some example. It, you know, let's let's give them some different language that they can start using, because you know it starts. It it always starts with one person, as that stone in the pond, and those ripples go out. So let's let's give our listeners something to change their language with. So, if somebody is talking, here's somebody talking about the war on drugs. What's a what's a better way for them to put on it? What would be a better term for them to use in response? Uh, you can say, uh, uh, I, I am loving a drug-free society. Okay. So we're not doing a war I mean, on drugs. We're doing a, a, a love-in right. for a drug-free society. Right. Um, you know, what I... Uh, uh, in fact, I just started... A, uh, Maggie just started a new book for me uh, yesterday, and it's just a, a bunch of aff affirmations. And she takes, uh, let me see if I can find, but it's um, all, all the affirmations start with loving myself. And that's where it really begins. Um, well, I'll just... Uh, uh, I'll just start with the first one she she sent. Uh, this is on love. And so what you can do, what you, uh, anybody can do is uh, when you get up in the morning, go to the bathroom, look yourself in the mirror, look in your eyes, and just say an affirmation. Now the one, the sum she gave me here are loving myself, I am loved through all eternity. Loving myself, I'm loving the soul of the world. Loving myself, I am loved by source. Loving myself, I am forever free. Loving myself, I am sacred. Loving myself, I am worthy. Loving myself, I am love. So she uses I am 
and uh, which is you know considered the word of God, the word of source, whatever, however you want to call it. And it starts out with loving myself. Uh, that that's uh, it, it's not so much as um, uh, focusing on the war on drugs or an anti-war rally, but rather just starting your day and throughout the day. Uh, assert these affirmations, loving myself, I am loved through all eternity. Well, you may not believe that in the beginning, but you don't have to believe it. I mean, the affirmations, the, 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 the reason affirmations can be powerful is that they just keep you out of the ego, right? They keep you off the negative, and it just keeps your mind focused in your heart, you know? So if I say to myself, you know, I look myself, uh, look at myself in the mirror and say, loving myself, I am loved through all eternity. Well, th that puts me right into my heart, you know. Uh, if I get up in the morning and, and avoid looking at myself in the mirror and, uh, you know, stay in a foul mood or something, well, you know, you're in your ego. And so it, it's just making a conscious choice of how to control your thinking. And as you control your thinking, you control your thoughts, you control your words, and you control your actions. But again, it's a, Kevin, it's an individual thing. You know, I get up in the morning and I listen to the song, the rhythm of uh, your heart. You know, um, because that that and in 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 my book, The Power of Angels, uh, the, the whole theme of all those love notes is listening to the rhythm of your heart. That's where your angels are. And, you, you know, and I was the same. I had to get used to doing that. I just didn't do it automatically. You know, it took me time. And I do it now more than I used to do it. But I don't do it 100% all the time um, because I'm human, you know. And, uh, you know, a lot of times people say, well, well, why didn't you do this or why aren't you like that? Well, because if I was, I wouldn't be here, right? I'd be... In fact, the first time I met Mary Magdalene, I didn't know it was her. I was taken into these light regions, and uh, we came to this source of light, and the guide stopped me and said, you can't go there. And I said, why? I want to. He says, you'll combust. The energy is so rarefied, it's vibrating at such a speed that you cannot handle it. That's, I didn't know it at the time. That was the light of Mary Magdalene. She told me that later when she came to me, you know, when she changed her her vibration to the point where I could actually see her. And uh, and she told me, yeah, that was, but you, you know, you, you were, and the reason I'm vibrating at this is so you can actually see me. Um, so, you know, it's just, uh, again, it goes back to what Henry David Thoreau said back in 1842. Just walk in the direction, walk confidently in the direction of your dreams. Get on your road to Rome and start walking. What that means for me is when I wake up in the morning, you know, I'm always aware of my ego. I drop into my heart as soon as I can. That's getting on my road to Rome. That's staying on the road, you know. And as you do that, things will come to you. You'll be given answers to questions. And, and, and well, so I every morning, and and I encourage my students to do this. I do. I, I have my daily spiritual practices, and I'll draw a an oracle, a goddess knowledge card, a tarot, a rune, a medicine card, whatever. And then I look at that as, well, this is the energy that's out there today. And whatever the card is, even if it's reversed or there's a negative aspect to it, I shift it into a positive, this is, you know, this is the energy. If it's going to rain today, I'm going to wear a raincoat and then I'm going to play in the rain. Right, sure. Sure. So, type of thing. I wonder, do you think that at any point you might take these messages, uh, messages from Maggie, and turn them into some kind of like oracle or or deck where people could like pull one and just kind of well, sit with an so individual she, she, message? Yeah, she's she's actually asked me to do that, and um, 
so I will when the uh, the right people show up and you know it all comes together. Um, and, and that's the way I, I operate. You know, I, I'll set an intention. Um, you know, that's how I got to Japan when you know I, I was a, a first degree black belt in Korean karate and. I, uh, when, when I left the service, I decided to go to Spain and live in Spain. I met a Japanese fellow there who was a, a black belt in Japanese karate. And he said, well, you know, you ought to go to Japan and train. And I said, well, Hiroki, how am I going to do that? You know, I, I just don't have the, I don't know anybody and, and whatever, you know. But I came back to, to San Diego. I, I went back into college. And I thought, well, how, maybe if I knew somebody there. So what I did is I looked in the yellow pages in those days and I found a, a karate school with a Japanese instructor who was from Japan. So I figured, well, maybe he'll have some contacts and maybe it will happen. But I kind of just, you know, I'd put it out there and that was it. So I enrolled in the school, but you know, the kind of person I am, I, I'd come in early, clean the dojo. You know, I'd attend all the classes, help teach some of them. Uh, when everybody was gone, I'd clean the dojo. Nobody had to ask me to do that. I just did it and, uh, as a gratitude. And and jo that's our music that's we've been on with joseph holmes ask maggie joseph at love yourself wealthy dot com send him a message uh a question you have and maggie mary magdalene will have an answer for you joseph thank you for joining us thank you so much kevin it was great thank you bye-bye everyone <laughs>